so in the last video we did page 211, number one, about midway through the page. And now on this one we're going to do 237, whoops, you daisy, 237, number 41. So go ahead, open your books to this page. Um, number 41 has got A through I, and we're just going to name these guys. So A is L-I-B-R. Remember, you just name the metal. So we have lithium. Double check to make sure that it's not uh, one of the elements that needs a Roman numeral. Remember, Roman numerals are needed on D block elements and also tin and lead. Lithium is an S block, so it does not need a Roman numeral, so just lithium. And then the second element is named with that IDE prefix if it's the just the element. So lithium bromide. That's A. B is SN. I'll just go ahead and erase this. Start fresh. Okay, so B is S N N O three two. S N stands for tin. That is one of the elements that needs a Roman numeral. N O three is a polyatomic ion, and if you go to your list, you see that N O three is nitrate. So to figure out what Roman numeral tin is going to have, you have to look at your nitrate. And your nitrate, according to that list that I gave you, come on, come up, there we go. According to that list that I gave you, nitrate has a charge of negative one. We have two of them, which overall gives us a charge of negative two. To balance out that negative two, we have to have a positive two. So that means we have tin two nitrate. Another way of looking at this, if you think of tin's charge or oxidation number as X. You need to add to that your negative charge, which in this case is two times the negative one charge on the nitrate, and we want the whole thing to equal zero. So in this case, you just solve for x, and you get positive two. All right, C is FeCl2. Fe stands for iron. Then we double check, is that one that needs a Roman numeral? It's a D block, so yes, it does. Cl is chlorine, but we need to do the IDE ending, so chloride. And to figure out the charge for iron, you look at chlorine. So chlorine normally has a charge of negative one, so we can say that the charge on iron is X plus the two chlorines each one having a negative one charge is going to be equal to zero. I know this looks so elementary, but it, it will, you'll, this will pay off doing it this way when you have multiple cations or when you have like multiple elements going on, like more than two elements, this will really come in handy. So in this case, solving for X, again, we get a Roman numeral of two. Moving on to the next one. We have MgO. This is the compound that you will be making in your lab on Friday. Uh, Mg is magnesium. That is an S block element, so it does not need a Roman numeral. Uh, and then O is oxygen, which becomes oxide. That one's pretty easy. Then we have KOH, K is potassium, and potassium is in group one, an S block, so it does not need a Roman numeral. Then we have, oh, wait a minute, we have two elements here, so overall we have three elements. That means somewhere in here is a polyatomic ion, and if you look at your polyatomic ion list, you'll see that OH is a polyatomic ion hydroxide. Whoopsie. So this is potassium hydroxide. Then we have Fe2O3, more commonly known as rust. Super fun stuff. 
uh, so we name iron. Iron is a D block, so it will need a Roman numeral. O becomes oxide. And this is where doing that algebraic kind of setup is going to pay off. Because we know that oxygen, group 16, should have a negative 2 charge. And iron is what we're trying to figure out. So we say 2 times x plus 3 times negative 2. The 3 comes from the subscript on the oxygen. The negative 2 comes from the charge. This whole thing is going to be equal to 0. Solve for x. And you end up with x equals 3 when you solve for that. Next up, AgNO3, one of my favorite compounds. Why is it your favorite compound, Ms. Harlow? Well, because it's just one of those ones that you can do some really cool things with. Uh, so silver nitrate, er, I just said the name of it. <laughs> Ag stands for silver. No, if you put this into bullets, it is not going to kill lichens. Silver is one of those exceptions that is in the D block, but does not need a Roman numeral, because silver is always a plus one. So silver, and then you'll notice NO3, hopefully you're getting more familiar with polyatomic ions, you'll recognize NO3 as nitrate. Silver nitrate. Then we have Fe, a lot of iron compounds on here. O, H, parentheses, 2. Fe again, iron. Iron needs a Roman numeral. And then OH, we've already dealt with. OH is the polyatomic ion hydroxide. To figure out the charge on iron, we know that hydroxide is a negative 1. So that means iron, we only got one of them, so we have X plus 2 times, over here, negative 1 equals 0. That makes X a 2. So we have iron 2 hydroxide. Last one, CRF2. CR is not one we worked with a lot, so look on your periodic table. CR stands for chromium. Chromium is a D block, so it does need a Roman numeral. F is fluorine, so fluorine becomes fluoride. And to figure out the charge on chromium, look at fluorine. Fluorine is in group 17, so it's a negative 1. So chromine is our X. Whoops, sorry. X plus 2 times negative 1. We have two fluorines at one negative 1 charge each. And that whole thing's got to be equal to zero. So chromium becomes chromium 2 fluoride. If you have any questions, please, please, please come into tutoring tomorrow and ask. You do not want to get behind on this. Have a great night.